Match 2249 for Age of Empires 4, Thursday, August 4th. The patch is live now, and it's going to be coming with remappable hotkey fixes, map balance changes, other balance features, and quality of life bug fixes. This is uh, read on aoe4world.com. I'm going to allow you to pause this and read it for yourself, but it's not something I'm going to read out line by line. I want to get to the juicy stuff. The balance changes. Mods. Again, I don't interact with this. Okay, let's go to balance changes. Herbal medicine. Hmm, cool, you can like see it when you click it. I like reading the patch notes here. It doesn't reset where you were, so I guess I have to open it in a new window. Okay, that works. Healing rate improvement reduced from 100% to 60%. And then they show like that it's a, a nerf. Sweet. I will, I will say I've often read patch notes and I wasn't aware whether it was a nerf or a buff. <laughs> like, I thought I knew, but sometimes I read it wrong. Like a reduction of a decrease, you know, that kind of thing when I was reading Hot's patch notes. So herbal medicine, this is something that was much requested for particularly elephant healing stacking. So now they just dropped it in general, also because A-move monks have become a lot better at healing. Cost reduced from 100 gold, 50 wood to 75, 25, and the duration from 45 to 25 seconds. This is so cheap now. I can't imagine that I would ever not get it now. This seems a lot better. If you can exploit deer at all, you should do it. Wheelbarrow into survival techniques or even survival techniques immediately. I can't wait to try this as Chinese on Altai or a map like it, like Hill and Dale, and to immediately supervise survival techniques and finish it in what? 10 seconds. It's gonna take 10 seconds. Siege engineering. This is a great change that I personally also lobbied a bit for. Yeah, this is for every Sith. And I'm assuming Delhi gets a pro rata reduction in research time as well. Research time reduced for siege engineering. I personally lobbied for this. I have long felt since the beginning of AOE 4 that towers, outposts are too effective, too cheap, too spammable, too cheap to cancel, too restrictive in the movement of the defender, especially tower rush, right? Aggressive tower rush. And that siege engineering takes too long, is too expensive, and that ramps are too slow at taking down outposts. It's one of my major reasons for first taking a break from Age of Empires 4, is the uh, outpost dominance. This is a great change. Outpost nerfs and siege engineering buff, I think is a great change. Keep in mind, ramps are still 420 health. So they're not exactly gonna blaze through keeps and outposts, when there's any kind of defense, but they can be used easily now against small numbers of outposts that are attacking your base. You can get it quicker. They're still expensive, but not as expensive as they were. Nice change. 50 wood less. It's a great change. I had actually also had a balance suggestion to the devs where I recommended that people can always build ramps in the vicinity of their own TC just there even without the upgrade that's kind of a more robust counter to outpost rushing and it also reduces the unique mongol or the unique abbasid advantage where only abbasid dynasty can do that dropping the design uniqueness of abbasid is probably something they didn't want to do and uh i get it i think this is yeah i think this is probably better Beastie suggested this too. Yeah, I was the first to suggest it. Just saying. Okay, scout. Production time increased from 20 to 25 seconds. Health regen reduced by 50%. So does that mean it's now 0.66 of what it was? Yeah. From 1 to 0.66, whatever it was. Uh, just saying. <laughs> uh, scouts can now see through stealth forest more reliably. Apparently, stealth forests and scouts have like a certain height. So they couldn't see over hill, hilled forests or something. Is battering ram rushing a thing? For a long time it was. There have been many ram versus TC interactive changes, by the way. TCs used to have a max arrows that was lower than advertised. 
Sometimes they had higher attack speed than advertised. Sometimes TCs couldn't retarget against anything except the RAM. They couldn't target other units. There have been so many changes. Now garrison uh, size of a TC is going down from 20 to 15, as we'll read later in the notes. Rams were dropped from 700 life to 420. The ranged armor went up. So many changes have happened. But yeah, ram rushing has been pretty common, but it has been less common as of late because of many other balance changes. Horsemen. Early horsemen and early men at arms. Uh, mans at arms, lol. Uh, early horsemen and men at arms upgrades have been reduced from 75.25 to 35.15 and from 30 to 15 seconds. So I like this change a lot. The unique Sif advantage of making Vanguard men at arms for English or early horsemen for Mongols often feels like a punishment because it's a, just another extra upgrade to get when you want to make them in the mid game, when you're not making them in tier one. And that punishment can be felt with HRE as well with men at arms, which is why HRE, when they fast castle rush, they often elect to go for knights initially, not their special men-at-arms. Because knights don't need any upgrades out of the gate at castle. Whereas Holy Roman Empire men-at-arms may need four upgrades. Running legs, uh, castle age men-at-arms upgrade, the two-handed and uh, the heavy-handed, whatever, the maces and, and so on. You know, four upgrades. And knights don't need that. And this was, uh, th these two were like a, a hamper on English and Mongols. And because the English and Mongols uh, had struggled a bit in the win rates recently, it's also a good time to address this, I think. So it feels like good targeted changes. Those upgrades should be free, no point in charging for them. I mean, they almost are. They almost are now. Yeah, yeah, this does nothing for HRE. I'm just saying, I don't think HRE ne needs it. Early Spearman upgrade also made cheaper. So this affects everybody except English. That's interesting. This is actually one that I wasn't aware was going to change. They may have snuck this in later after we saw the internal patch notes a couple, like a week ago or so. I hadn't seen this one or maybe I missed it, but this is kind of a stealth buff to every Sif against French. I mean, it's good for anyone, obviously, except English. So. Actually, in a vacuum, this is a nerf to English, right? This is a buff and this is a nerf to English. But also, the biggest user of knights are HRE and French. Maybe Mongols, but mostly, mostly really uh, French. So this is going to help a bit. Especially with Delhi and with HRE and Chinese against uh, French. It's going to help a lot. So I like it. Generally, the devs are trying to get more feudal action and less castle age feudal skipping. Let's see how it goes. Defenses no longer favor ramps as a target. I feel like this one needs a lot of explanation. There's so many ways to interpret this. Let's see how they mean it. When defending a ram rush, defenses will get stuck attacking ramps since they do so little damage. Uh, defenses do little damage to ramps. It's possible to force defenses to attack other targets manually, but... We want to give defenders more breathing space to focus on managing more interesting elements of combat. So what does it mean? If a ram comes into range of a TC and nothing else, TC attacks the ram. The moment an archer steps in range of the TC, the TC automatically retargets to the archer. Archer leaves, it attacks the ram. Archer comes back, he attacks the archer again. That's how I understand it. And I don't see any other way that this would work. The only other explanation that would make this have any meaning would be a ram and an archer literally enter the range simultaneously and as it parses, instead of flipping a coin, it chooses the archer, but that doesn't make any sense. It's gotta be automatic retargeting away from ram whenever possible. And is that a good change? I'm not sure. There are some precedents in Warcraft 3. There is a pretty clear targeting priority as well for units. For example, Demolisher will typically attack units, like generally in Warcraft 3, units attack other units that threaten them. 
And when the units don't threaten them, their attack priority drops. Their threat ratio and their attack priority drops. So for instance, a Serpent Ward, which is magic immune summonable from Shadow Hunter, never attacks a Druid of the Talon if he can at all help it, because a Druid of the Talon has a magic attack and therefore cannot attack the magic immune Serpent Ward. And therefore the Serpent doesn't see the Talon as a threat and he will attack other things, even though the Serpent Ward does insane damage to a Talon and is a hard counter. So if you were to follow the same logic that is enshrined here, then you would say in Warcraft 3, in order to allow a player to focus on more interesting elements of combat, Serpent Wards will automatically target the highest priority unit, priority unit, which is Druids of the Talon. And that's really OP there. So should it be the case here? I know, I know it's probably different because there's a lot more macro in AoE 4 and a lot less micro than in Warcraft 3. So perhaps focusing on more macro and trying to you know summon units is more interesting than constantly having your TC retarget. But there was another way. You could have allowed shift queuing as a TC, where you click on an archer and then you hold shift and then you click on all the other archers and it will keep retargeting until there are no valid targets in the queue uh, available. If the archers all step back and then they come back into range of TC, then you need to do it again. But at the very least, it won't be like kill an archer, go to ram. Kill an archer, go to ram. Because you've done all the shift commands. That would be the micro way. So if you had 30 archers, you would shift 30 times. You could do that, or you could just settle for 5 or 10. And then revisit it mentally later. I mean, it's an RTS. There's a lot of micro. This makes the game easier in some way. But anytime you make it easier for one player, you also make it harder for the other. So it's now harder to send archers and spears with a ram to raid someone's base, directly countering the goal that the devs have to stimulate feudal aggression and feudal fights and, and extended feudal phases. Not every change has to push towards feudal extension, and maybe this is a good change by itself. And they do nerf TC. So we'll see. Town center, default weapon attack interval increased from 112 to 188. Well, that's like what, 50% drop almost, or more. Wait, uh, how much is that? That's more than 50% attack speed drop. Garrison and arrow attack, I, although you never know with AOE4 and their tooltips. I like it in general, TC firing at ramps is just useless. Yeah, kind of. I wonder if you can still manually retarget onto a ram. I suppose you can. And how does that work? If you manually retarget your TC onto a RAM, will it ever manually tar will it ever automatically target archers again? Or can you even not force to attack the RAM because it is constantly having a tick rate of retargeting to archers? Do you know what I mean? This is a big nerf to everyone that isn't French. Generally, you don't need to put 20 villagers in against archers or against like against longbowmen or against Chinese. Generally, you need 20 villager slots as Holy Roman Empire against French, as Delhi against French, sometimes as Delhi against Mongols with mass lancers. But almost never does French need this against other Sifs. So while this will indeed make raiding more effective, even something as simple as 10 archer raids, even if you sacrifice all the archers under the enemy TC, you now can get paid off better. But I mostly see it as a French knight buff. 59% buff, uh, nerf, yeah. Outpost health. I really applaud this change. I don't know how this is going to work out yet, the town center, but I really applaud the outpost nerf of health. They are incredibly tanky. This will nerf all forms of outpost usage, including defensive, aggressive, as well as polka dots outposts. You guys know polka dots outposts? When you pepper the map everywhere with outposts to get vision and to control all space, uh, including the Delhi style. 
including the Delhi style one outpost per sacred site that I like to do. That's going to be a bit weaker. And does it mean when you get the upgrade it's going to be 1750 or 1500? I guess 1750 since they didn't talk about the fortification upgrade. Is this also a Rus buff? Yes, it is, right? Because they didn't mention Wooden Fortress. Yeah, now knights can just burn down tower. I agree with that. And perhaps towers should not be able to fend off entire armies. So I think it's a good thing. If you want to protect a tower against like 10 knights, you should also have six spearmen there. Build time increased. I think this is a fantastic improvement as well. Uh, this is great. This is uh, also technically a small buff to Chinese. Since every build time increase affects them half less. 15 seconds for them is just seven and a half. If it was up to the Chinese, all build times for everything in the game would be doubled. Uh, garrison attack interval increased as well. Wow. Oh, the garrison attack interval. Okay. Not the emplacements, but just the units inside. So it becomes a lot weaker. Are Mongols still towering a lot? Yeah, I'd say so, right? They don't have walls, so Mongols rely on towers even when they're not doing cheesy tower rushes. Yeah, I, I think I like the change. Tower Elephant. Health reduced from 860 to 600. Range armor from 4 to 7. I'm not sure how much I like this one. So let's talk about Tower Elephant's ranged armor first before talking about the health. Archers deal 5, 7, and 8 damage without upgrades. With upgrades, they deal 6, 9, and 11 damage. With incendiary, 13. Okay, elephants, they benefit from upgrades as well. So generally, archers do not hurt Tower Elephants. The matchup almost doesn't matter. Same problem with crossbows. They do a bit more than archers, but they still really be weak against tower elephants. And since the range is the same as tower elephants, generally they lose. Hand cannons, they do like 40 damage. 40 damage, whether there's three armor more or less, doesn't really matter. In fact, I feel like hand cannons damage point is quite high and hard to balance because they neither benefit at all from upgrades in attack, nor do they get stopped at all by armor upgrades. Like they're kind of a weird unit where the blacksmith upgrades don't really play into, yeah, don't really come into effect anymore. That's how I feel like, like hand cannon upgrades of attack and enemy ranged armor don't really matter. They just slap, period. And so I don't see what this actually does at all, except as a compensation for this. But here's the funny thing. If you know about World of Warcraft and RPGs and Warcraft 3 and you know about the relate and MOBAs, you know about the relationship of armor to healing, then you'll know that the higher armor something has, the more beneficial uh, the more beneficial of a circle it has cycle with healing. Healing and armor has a synergistic relationship. And it is better to have really high armor and a small health pool and then get healed all the time than to have really high health, no armor, and get healed all the time. Because all those healing points are worth extra. If an armor drops something, uh, drops the damage by 50%, then the healing is essentially worth twice as much on that unit. So if the goal was, and I know it was, to drop the effectiveness of scholar spam healing with elephants, then this would actually make elephants even better because they have higher armor. But because I don't think, yeah, and it actually makes them so much better to archers and crossbows and they already were. So now it just makes them a harder counter, I suppose, to ranged because of the extra healing benefits and because of the armor. It still makes them useless against hand cannons. It keeps them useless. And they get worse to spearmen, knights, and horsemen. And men-at-arms. So let's talk about the health. Elephants have received nerf after nerf in their health because of the elephant timing attacks and the spam elephants with spam scholars. 
The main reason is, and always was, two things. The amount of healing rate and the fact that you could stack healing. In Warcraft 3, Rifleman Priest strategy for human, a priest can only heal one Rifleman one at a time. In AoE 4 it's always been stackable. And many players have felt that stacking should not be allowed because that leads to problematic relationships that cannot be accounted for. 10 scholars healing one elephant can make it invincible. And you cannot target down the scholars because they can also spam heal each other. And that led to some unbreakable composition sometimes. The health maximum of the elephant was never the problem. When the rate of healing is higher than the rate of damage taken. So I feel like this is addressing the problem in the wrong way. I don't know that many people said that tower elephants by themselves are too good into either archers or spears or knights or horsemen. It was always the synergy with the healers. The healing has already been addressed. The healing rate has gone down. So I don't see the need to further reduce the health of the elephant. This is a 1000 resources unit we're talking about that will now get countered even easier by spearmen and horsemen, which they already were. Now elephants can run away from spears to kite against them, but if you are able to kite away from spears and kill them, the amount of health you have doesn't matter. So in situations where elephants, tower elephants run away from spears to kite them and kill them, their health will not matter and therefore the nerf to health is ineffective. Against horsemen, they're a lot weaker now. So this change seems specifically to affect horsemen, faster brand of men at arms and knights and not spears. So did anyone need that? Did anyone need elephants to be worse against horsemen, knights and men at arms? If so, you've been given it. But I believe they've been over nerfed now. Now that the healing is lower and with all the other nerfs, now you suddenly start to feel all the nerfs at once because the real thing that was empowering them was the healing. So yeah, I, I don't agree with this. I think this could be reverted and wait and see first what happens. This might be just too weak of a unit. Town center. Production speed bonus in feudal for French has been decreased from 15 to 10 and from 20 to 15 in castle. Uh, Dark Age and Imperial remain the same. So what that means, I believe, is one second off in castle and one second off in feudal. And that's a pretty nice nerf. French are mostly running away with a 10 20 minute range uh, game and now this will help address their runaway economy. So they're very eager not to nerf the French knights because of the racial identity. I think a lot of people would say hey knights are the problem and I respect devs right to stubbornly adhere to other solutions because as we know French have multiple advantages faster villager cheaper research cheaper resource buildings and the knights. Those four advantages in feudal, not talking about arbitrier yet, those four advantages, any one of those four could be addressed to address the fact that French for the last nine months, the entire lifespan of the game, has been the best performing civilization across almost all echelons of the ladder. It is time to address it, not to tank the Sith. Keep in mind, that people that play AoE 4 right now are used to the status quo of French being the strongest uh, in, in win percentage. So you never want to bring them to rank 8. Although that may seem fair and karmic and let another one shine. Right now there is, and I might be the only one that feels this way, this may be a hot take. But if you take an existing fan base for a game people that have gotten used to strong French Civ, and you say, now it's time for another king to rule, then those existing fan bases say, you're the king? Well, I didn't vote for you. And then they're gonna go somewhere else. And they're gonna leave the player, the player base. And people that wanted uh, HRE to be the best, to be the king, they, already aren't playing the game anymore because HRE has always been bottom four. 
So even if you buff them, that's not going to necessarily bring a lot of players back. It could, though. It could, though. It might just be too much of an overthink and a hot take. But I don't think French should be made to be the eighth strongest. They should still be top four. They're relatively easy to play, so probably it's always going to be that way. And we'll see if this is going to do it. And maybe there could be another 5 or 10% nerf in the in like the building cost of eco drop-offs and research as well. Thank you so much for the sub, Gear of War. HRE, this is a good nerf that a lot of people ask for. Feels like it's undoing your work. Actually, as much as I hate Mule in Heroes of the Storm, a building repairing auto repair, I should hate this too, I feel like. But, uh, you know, it's a unique Sif advantage. I think it's okay. Prelate. No more bug abuse with cooldowns. Let's see if they actually manage to ace this change. They can say it, I want to see it. Love this change. Mongols, now begin the game with a packed Gur. Mongols are going to have a packed Gur. I think that's great. It really, like, first of all, it's, it's funny, like, are Mongols strong or weak right now? I heard that and saw that they were bottom stats and I heard that they were top two. What is actually the truth? Let's take a look at it. This is any level. What about diamond and above? Yeah, they're number two. They're weak, says Sato, but based on what? They're still number two. This this is ladder stats. There's nothing more reliable, right? At pro level, they're poor. You say that, right? And, and we've heard that a lot. But when I casted the EGC games, Red Bull to Wallolo, Mongols had like over 60% win rate. Guess who didn't? The super overpowered HRE. I feel like stats are actually more useful than BCQT's opinion. Or, or other players. And more useful for most of the player base and even for pro play because not everything always lives up to the expectations and uh, judgments of even our best players, which he is. He is. But I look at the tourney stats and the ladder stats with a more objective eye and kind of stats junkie because, I don't know, it just seems to trump our bias every time. Turns out Mongols aren't that weak. Nonetheless, besides the power level of Mongols, keep in mind they're going to take a bunch of nerfs, like outpost nerfs. And even, I think Mongols is very vulnerable to villager harass now. Much more than before. Because TC's only garrison 15 villagers. That's going to make their pasture farming under TC a lot more vulnerable. I think harassing Mongols can seem much more attractive now. But yeah, let, let's be real. HRE, OP, Outcry was premature and Mongols being weak was premature too. Stats do not support this. I do like this regardless. Outside of the power level of Mongols, I think this is a great change simply because Mongols has such a large variance of starting RNG. You put the TC only next to wood, only next to... Well, oh, you always should choose the wood, right? Only next to wood. Wood and berries. Wood, berries and gold. Wood, berries, gold and stone. Like, there's so many variants. And the Gur is going to help a lot with that. It is a huge buff, though. F a fantastic huge buff. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how the stats are. But I think this is a good design change. Not talking about power level, but design change. Altai. Gold generation locations on Altai have been given a pass after seeing... Okay, I'm going to let you pause this and read it yourself. I usually don't go through these with a fine-toothed comb. Horse archery incendiary arrows no longer l lose attack speed. Lose when they are upgraded. Fix the crash that could occur when clicking on a match summary bug where you could repair structures even when you don't have the resources. No, no more depots. UI UX changes. French third and fourth age up markers are now shown in post match UI. Nice. Uh, 
uh, what's on the horizon in future patches we'll be addressing other issues like shift interfering with grid keys under the grid key layout as well as shift queuing not resetting after releasing shift we did it we did it what is the problem with shift being a toggle and not being a momentary modifier you'll have heard some content creators talk about it including me and the muslim and this is a change introduced a couple of patches ago and i'm no longer holding shift i have currently released shift you can see that a is still highlighted the next time i press left click they're gonna do an attack move command in that direction not holding shift instead of selecting something so if i were to select this scout with a left click that would not work instead you saw the red cursor it doesn't so i made that video and it was seen and i'm not the only one that made the video but i did try to make it the clearest and i'm very glad that they finally understand the problem and are actually looking to change it because this has been a problem for months and we've tried to explain them I press escape in the situation. Right. But what does escape normally do is deselect current unit selection. What do you expect escape to do? Deselect current unit selection. What does escape do now? Exit, attack, toggle. So now you're learning a situation where sometimes escape does what it's meant to do and sometimes it does something else because you're hidden in a sub menu that you no longer want to be in even while you're not holding shift. Same thing with left click. All right, left click is select a unit. I'm not holding shift, left click is select a unit, but now suddenly it does something else. So uh, yeah, and it's not necessary, it's just pointless. And I wanna do another video because hold the ground has an issue too. I'm gonna make that video uh, right after the dispatch notes actually. Last month, we shared an early view of the season three roadmap, including key features like team ranked taunts and cheats that will launch with our next major update. We've heard since that some of you would like to hear an update on naval balance. Significant balance changes like these require time and a number of different steps and teams acting in unison. It's a bigger change than you would expect. Here are some of the changes we've planned for naval balance. Enhanced tactical RPS gameplay. Starting in the feudal age, you'll have access to three ships, rock, paper, and scissors. They will all have strong bonuses against one another. I hope they just call it rock ship, paper ship, scissor ship. Earlier engagements, we're making ships more affordable, so expect to have bigger battles that start earlier in the game. Responsiveness turning, tuning, faster movement speed and more responsive turning of all ships. New casts, stats and enhancements available for all ships. Adding more wood and ensuring fairer distribution of fish. These sound great. These sound great. And I wonder if, if the RPS if all of them can kill docks, one big problem right now is that galleys cannot kill docks, but hulks can kill docks. Even if one counted the other, there's still the situation that the hulk user comes in, kills your dock in 10 seconds. The galley user can never guarantee supremacy. Man, I wish naval was discouraged more. I think we're always gonna have naval haters. That happens in AOE too as well. and. I even remember that happening in 1996 games. People that just don't like water. Usually yours truly uh, is, is part of that as well. But I think AOE 4 has charm on water as well. I think AOE 4 water games can have some charm. I, I think part of it, I really like it, unironically. But there's people that hate it no matter what. And maybe they should have an option to thumb down. Perhaps we should never have more water maps than the amount of thumbs down that you have. But for those that are water enjoyers, I like it that it gets improved. Now, that was it. That was the patch notes. Hope you enjoyed.